the end of the last episode, we had concluded that we have to run two more lines from right here down to right here. And we were wondering, can we drill a hole? And I'm thinking it, that if I have the bit at a bit of an angle, like you see it here, uh, yes, we can. I can't go straight down because I'm going to start catching parts that are sticking out of this thing right here. But I do believe that we could probably come in at a bit of an angle. So probably just a millimeter in from the edge because I don't want to be drilling down into the into this wall here. Or maybe I should say bulkhead. Okay, let's See, can I turn that without catching anything? Yeah, I think I can. This will make sort of our pilot hole. And then we'll put the macro lens on and get in nice and close. That should be good. Now I'm thinking I better make this pilot hole just a little bit deeper here. Reason being is I'm not going to be coming straight down. I'm going to be coming at an angle and I don't want the drill to all of a sudden start walking across that surface. As I'm editing out this macro shot just now I'm realizing that I already was deep enough. I didn't need to go anymore. But I couldn't see it from my perspective there. Okay, now let's not catch anything with the chuck. There, it's in. And it's through. You'll notice I went a little bit faster. Now just a quick update here. You'll remember that yesterday I sort of cut things off a little bit earlier so that I could upload a little bit earlier. And yeah, everything went fine. Everything was normal. Those of you who watched exactly at the time the video was posted will have noticed it was in high res right away. Okay, what's this all about? I have had a couple of comments from two different people with this suggestion. And... Uh, the idea is you would take and drill a hole in your plastic and if you wanted something to be able to tie to, like we'll get our, our needle straight here, um, yeah you could use a pin head or a needle and uh, yeah you can you can see then you could run in the needle you could just run run your easy line through there through the hole uh, at least I think you could get it through yeah, you should be able to get that easy line through there. Now, surprisingly, the holes that you would have to drill to ha for either one of these, even the pin, which is a slightly smaller diameter, the holes that you would drill would have to be larger than the holes we're drilling now. So, uh, <laughs> just thought I'd throw that in. Anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a good idea. Thought I'd just sort of pass that on. Thanks to those viewers. Well, it's a good thing that I'm not a cat, because they say curiosity killed the cat. I just wanted to see how well would this easy line actually work on this. Oh yeah, I can, I can see where that would work just fine. I wonder, would this go through a second time? Well, you can see it would. I don't need to beat this to death. Okay, will it go through a third time? Gotta check. Yes, it'll go through three times. And this is a small needle, it's not a big one. Okay. That easy line is wonderful stuff. Now I have to pull this out just to show you that this is really one of the smaller needles. We gotta keep everything in perspective here. Oh, 
Okay, something like that. Now, if we were downstairs in the workshop and we wanted to take the burrs off the inside of a brass tube when we're turning pens, we'd probably use something like this. But I kind of think that's sort of overkill. I've got a paintbrush here that's got stiff bristles. See if we can just sort of scrub that off. It'll help anyway. I'm afraid to scrape on it with anything because I might, uh, you know, accidentally make it look worse. Well, that's not bad. I don't know, looking at it, it still doesn't look very good there. I wonder if this toothpick would sort of take it off without scraping the paint off. Now can we still get the thread in there, I wonder? Well, I guess we'll soon find out. It's cleaned up anyway. Okay, now did I plug our hole or is it... You know what, I think there's a little hair on the end of that. I'm going to have to trim that off. Okay, I cut a couple of millimeters off the end with the scissors. There's still something on there, but at least we got it in. Oh, easy does it here. No, it doesn't have to go very far. Now I watched those clips two or three times and I could not figure out why it was that the easy line did not want to go into the hole. It was almost as if there was some sort of a force field going on there that was keeping it away. Um, now, if I was doing the Starship Enterprise, I could understand, yeah, it was probably a force field. They had one. Now, I do think, though, that the Bismarck had a cloaking device. Uh, yeah, didn't it have a smoke screen? That's sort of a cloaking device. Okay, now what usually happens when I try something like this... I either bump the camera, or I bump the subject, and I put it out of focus. Now when that cures, that line's not going anywhere. Now, when I was editing out that last scene there, um, this is the way I was supporting myself. Pretty much like this. And uh, when you're viewing it like this, it, it doesn't really look like I'm trembling or shaking. You know, it looks, it looks fairly steady. But I am trembling. And I'm thinking to myself, my goodness, am I getting old or what here? Well, there's that too. But when you move in really close, like especially when you're using the super macro, you're just right in there. Every single little flaw, every single movement is amplified something fierce. And now I can, I can see that I'm trembling here. Maybe if I stop talking, it would stop a little bit. Well, almost. Uh, but anyway, that's what that was all about. Okay, let's see now if we can get this adhered right there. This little scale is uh, fairly accurate but it's not what you would call super sensitive it will only weigh down to a tenth of a gram and this is the uh, piece of uh, blue tack that we were using yesterday as a weight to put tension on the line and it looks like it weighs about three tenths of a gram okay what's this all about now In the comments, which I read all of, by the way, even if I don't reply, um, somebody had suggested I use alligator clips. And my thinking was that the alligator clip was probably too heavy, but in my mind I was thinking of the heavy ones, the metal ones that I've done in my workshop. I'd forgotten about these plastic ones, although this, this feels kind of light. Um, 
just for the fun of it, let's see how much it weighs here. Let it zero itself. And uh, you may not be able to read that, so you're going to take my word for it. Okay, it's 2.5 grams. The other was 0.3, so you divide 3 into 25. What's that, about 8? So in other words, this is 8 times heavier than this is. Um, now, I had thought, okay, uh, I could use a clothespin to grab hold of the line. Like, I don't know if you can see this right here, but I'm grabbing hold of my line here. And I could take it, pull it, pull it back at the right tension, and just sort of lay it down somewhere, and it would hold it that way. Um, and then I remembered I got these things here. Oh, what what made me think of it was one of the viewers was talking about locking scissors, and I forget the the proper name for them, but I knew what he meant. And uh, yeah, uh, but I do have these. These are a tweezer. Uh, I'm noticing that they're a little bit sharp here, and I think I'm going to have to take and get the burrs off of that. The reason the reason it's sharp is because I had sort of blunted the the the, uh, the nose of it, so that when I come in to pick up on something, uh, both surfaces are going to be grabbing at the same time. For instance, I just grabbed a tiny little piece of dust there. Um, uh, once again, I'm starting to ramble and giving you more information than you need. But, here's what I was thinking to make myself a pair of locking scissors. Okay. Now, what I could do is you pull them apart. Maybe I've got too much elastic on there pull them apart, grab hold of whatever, just let it go, and then I've got myself a pair of locking scissors. Okay, let's get on with this. Now the reason I'm showing this is because I don't want somebody to comment and tell me all you did was make the nib sharper. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I kind of know what I'm doing. Sometimes. gotten rid of all the sharp edges and burrs now on that thing. I don't need to worry about it accidentally cutting the line. And like picking up a hair, trying to pick up this easy line is, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be okay. All right. There. I didn't need to order the special scissors on Amazon. Now I checked the diagram from the other model's manual and it appears that all of these lines that we have up here um, if I can get this off okay they all seem to be just wrapped around the mast right here whereas I'm gluing them onto the side um, yeah just just a point of interest there I'm wondering if this crochet hook is just maybe a little bit, I don't know, maybe it curves around too much, or maybe I don't need it that long. Maybe I should shorten it just a little bit. Well, that didn't work. I tried to open it up just slightly, and it snapped off, and I didn't bend it very far either, so that steel must be very brittle. Maybe if I heat it up and take the temper out of it, I can sort of curl it back down and I'm going to have to <laughs> once again with my sandpaper get the sharp burrs off of there. Okay, what I did was I heated it up red hot in the propane torch and then sort of bent it back down around. Then I uh, 
filed and then used a wire brush to sort of try and get rid of some of the burrs but I'm noticing there's a bit of a bulb on the end and I'm wondering if that could end up hanging up on my uh, easy line when I try to release I want it to sort of slip off you know well I guess have to test it and try it right No, it doesn't seem to be hanging up. Okay, I have here about half as much blue tack as we had before. Now I don't want it so slack as I mentioned that it's going to all of a sudden sort of sag, but I think that's okay. I'll just touch a little bit of CA right there. Okay, I have my magnification hood on, and I want to just put just the tiniest little bit on, because I don't want it to wick its way around to the back. So, how can I hold this here? I think I got it. No, oh, that didn't work. Well, as long as I've got it like this, maybe that's what I'll use to hold on to it. Or maybe just my fingers here. Okay. Now, I think... Oh, I want to break that off. I think if I pull this taunt and then touch the blade here... Well, that's not working. go. Yeah. Well, it didn't work exactly as planned, but it worked. I've been working on this model now for, what, uh, over a year, I guess. So I, I guess that would be like hundreds of hours. And uh, you would think that during this year I would have dreamt about it a lot but last night was the first time I actually dreamt about it that I remember anyway it was a funny dream uh, I was driving along in the car with my wife my wife was beside me in the passenger seat and she was holding this in her lap and then all of a sudden she gets the idea that she wants to slide it down under the dash and before I could stop her, she did. And the superstructure all broke, but it, it didn't really snap off. It all kind of folded over, like the whole thing was made out of some sort of clay, like modeling clay or Play-Doh or something. Anyway, the next scene, I've got it in the back seat and I'm looking at it and I'm saying to her, well, I think I can fix it. And I was, I was trying to be sympathetic because I knew she had Alzheimer disease and, and in real life she did. That's, in case some of you don't know, that's what my wife died from. She died just over two years ago from Alzheimer's disease. And it, yeah, dreams are so weird, you know? Um, sometimes you wonder, uh, is, was that reality and this is the dream? I don't think so. 
But anyway, uh, I'm going to cut this video off here uh, for today and get it uploaded. So thanks for watching and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow in reality, I think. <laughs>